Hi everybody. Today I'm going to talk about antennas that I use and a lot of other people use to listen to far away AM radio stations. Uh, one of the challenges with medium wave or, or AM uh, distant listening or what we call DXing is the fact that the radio waves themselves coming from these AM stations are very very long waves and if you live in a city or town that has a medium wave or AM station you'll probably notice that they have these really high towers usually outside of town somewhere and the towers might be hundreds of feet high that's because the the wavelength of the signal they're transmitting is also very long and, and is more efficient if they broadcast it from a tower or a structure that is close to as long as the wave itself if they can get that there's ways to achieve shorter towers but it's all a bit of a compromise so similarly to receive waves like that we also want to have antennas that are as long as possible and if you're just uh, living in a building lot a standard subdivision like myself where you only have uh, you know however many thousand square feet which isn't very much uh, you don't have those hundreds and hundreds of meters or yards to string antennas in, in long distances. So instead, people who know radio theory a lot better than I do have designed antennas that will still work with long, long frequency waves, long wavelengths. However, uh, they are not nearly as long as those waves and therefore it's a bit of a compromise, but it's a pretty good compromise because they still work very well. And I have one of those kinds of antennas right here in my yard. This antenna is called a pennant. The pennant is essentially a triangle of wire. This is one side of the triangle, and up in the air is the other side of the triangle, and they go to both the top and the bottom of this pole. I'll get my shadow out of the way so you can see it a little easier. This wire then connects to a box that I've made out of a standard short-term food container and I'll show you what's inside that box. It's pretty simple really. The bottom wire right here comes up inside a little hole that I've drilled into the box and goes to one of these terminals whereas the top wire comes down and goes into the other terminal. Ideally they don't touch each other and then those two terminals are connected through a little coil and transformer setup which in turn connects to the cable that then takes the radio signal all the way into my house and ultimately to my radio. The beauty about everything being in this little box is that I can make it waterproof uh, as best I can. It may not be perfect but it's been up now for over a week and there's been a few rainstorms. There's no moisture at all inside the box. So I think so far so good as far as, uh, as the weatherproofedness of that box goes. What makes this antenna work similarly as well as a long, long, long piece of wire is that little transformer thing. That transformer is part of the compromise. It takes the, the signal from the wire as it is, which is in total length about 65 feet long, and matches the impedance of that uh, to the feed line, which then takes it into my, into my home. Uh, again, it's not perfect. It is a compromise but it's a compromise that works well. And on this antenna already, I've heard the Middle East, I've heard Africa, I've heard Europe, and even into Asia with it quite well. And this is on the regular AM band. If you have a car and a car radio that says medium wave or AM, uh, basically that's the, the band. And normally you're used to hearing stations in your hometown, uh, perhaps from a few hundred miles away when it gets dark and you've maybe heard baseball games or things from, from a greater distance. Uh, you may have been a bit curious as to how that happens, uh, but actually uh, there's a lot of science involved, much of which I don't really understand, but I do know how to take advantage of those conditions at the right time. Uh, this is the right time of year for this kind of uh, radio reception, more so than at other times of the year. Now, if you've watched a few of these videos, you may have wondered why radio signals come in so much better at night uh, on the AM band than they do in the daytime. A few of you have even asked the, those questions in the comments in some of my previous videos. So I'd like to explain it now if I could, and this won't take very long. Essentially, radio waves have energy in them. The longer the wavelength, the less energy there really is in a radio wave because it's so long. 
And, and a radio wave is like a wave in the ocean. It, it goes up and it goes down and it travels uh, great distances. As the radio waves get smaller, each individual wave really has more energy in it. Plus, in my mind, it's, this is not exact, but this is how I like to interpret it. Because it's a smaller wavelength, it allows it to pass through things better than a longer wavelength wave would. And I would liken that to a screen on your window. If you have a regular window screen, it'll uh, keep bumblebees, hornets, wasps, mosquitoes out. But there's probably tiny, tiny little flies that can still get in through that screen. And there are tiny, tiny little radio waves up in the microwave spectrum that can get through in places that regular big lumbering waves can't get. And one of the things that impedes these big, long lumbering waves is the bottommost layer of the ionosphere, which is part of the upper atmosphere that's above us all the time. The ionosphere is divided into several layers, and the bottom layer that concerns us is called the D layer. And the D layer is present during the daytime. Whenever the sun is shining on the Earth, that part of the Earth has an activated D layer. Now, a lot of radio signals can just zip on through the D layer if they're small enough in wavelength. But the longer wavelength signals cannot go through the D layer. So they go up to the D layer and they get absorbed. Your AM radio station in the daytime is sending signals up towards the D layer, but they get absorbed and then they don't bounce and come down somewhere else. So the range of that radio station is limited in the daytime. However, at night, as soon as the sun gets close to setting, the D layer is already starting to evaporate. And as the sun goes down all the way, the D layer essentially disappears entirely. It allows those longer lumbering waves from medium wave AM stations to get up past the D layer and up into the F layer. There's an E layer sometimes, but there's mainly an F layer, F1 and F2. And if the radio signal can get up to the F layer, it either goes straight on through if it's a small enough wavelength, or if it's a longer wavelength, it refracts off the F layer and comes down some distance away, just like a, a tennis ball hitting off the court. It then lands again farther down. So luckily at night, when the D layer disappears, the AM signals can then go up and get to that F layer and they can refract back down to the earth hundreds and sometimes even thousands of miles away. And that's what allows all these signals to come in so well at night that you cannot hear in the daytime. But radio stations in your local town, they don't really care about the nighttime coverage because they have an advertisement on the station for the local car dealership. They don't care if someone 500 miles away hears that advertisement. They don't really uh, program for that person because the local car dealership will not ever have any customers from 500 miles away, presumably. So the radio station doesn't really care. It's not an intentional function of radio stations to go that far at night. They just do. And when they do, people like me, who like to listen to faraway radio stations, can just gather it all up. It's like swimming into a, a or sailing over a big school of fish. There they are. All these stations have popped up in the band. And you can record them and listen to them and listen to them later. And every day is different. And that's why this is not just a hobby that, you know, you, see, you set up some stuff and you go to work uh, at, at your radio for a day or two and then hear everything there is to be heard. It's not like that at all. What actually happens uh, with radio, because there are so many little things that will affect the signal quality, the signal distance, that it's worthwhile listening every single night, especially in the wintertime. You could have a solar flare. You could have uh, just high general solar activity. You could have northern lights, which brings extra geomagnetic activity and causes some absorption from some stations while letting other stations come through okay. So you end up hearing stations that you usually don't hear because they were covered over by a station that thankfully is now being blocked out for the next day or two because of northern lights or something. So every single day is different. That's why the hobby is so interesting. Now it is best in the winter time for a few reasons. Firstly, there's more darkness in the winter time. Uh, in this part of the world where I am in Eastern Canada, we have roughly eight hours of daylight in the middle of the winter and about 16 hours of darkness or twilight. Uh, in the summertime, it's reversed. So in the summertime, there's a lot less darkness to listen. Plus in the summertime, there's thunderstorms everywhere and there's lots more static electricity and crashes and, and interference on the, on the dial and you don't hear as much uh, quality signals in the summer. So that's why it's uh, not optimal. In the fall of the year, late October through November, and really into the winter and through until March or April, is really prime time for long distance medium wave reception. 
So I'm looking forward to this winter with COVID. There's not much else to do outside, especially with the weather the way it uh, will be too. Uh, so it's just as well to stay inside and do something that you love. And I do love to listen to the radio. Not so much for the content. I get the content on the internet. But the, the, the thing that I'm catching, the signal itself to me is fascinating that I can even hear it. So I do all I can to try to make that capture as high quality as possible. I record it, I report it, I talk about it, and uh, I relish it. So there, that's why radio signals on the AM band travel farther in the nighttime than they do in the daytime. Uh, there are other parts of the radio spectrum that behave differently than the medium wave band. I can talk about those at some point. Uh, there are some parts of the radio spectrum that are really independent of daylight or darkness. They just work well or work poorly basically all the time. So that's the upshot on the medium wave signal situation and we'll be doing some more listening tonight. Thank you.